All right, quick update to Shop ADHD 41. Um, I managed to find a TNMG 434 insert in my stash of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. Again, this is a C2 grade, uh, just like the other ones. So I got it. Uh, this one in here and we're going to go ahead and see how she runs. So outside of these little hard spots here, and I talked to Clark about this. Clark said that the, the cause of this are these sharp angles here on these sides, and that a radius on these sharp sides would, would diminish this, this hardening here. So I'm going to look at how I can modify that um, pattern uh, to make that work. Anyway, finish out here is great. I mean, it's just like looks like her ground finish. Okay, here we go. 432, 433, 434. Um, I think based on my depth of cut, uh, there isn't going to be any real big difference between the 433 and the 434. And, uh, I believe that's, that's proven out there. Very similar in uh, finish, um, but definitely superior to the 432. So anyway, um, just a little add in there. Hey YouTube, Jake Troy back in the shop for a little more Shop ADHD number 42. Um, uh, stick around to the end of the video. We're going to have the giveaway for the uh, Atlas wrench and um so we got all sorts of stuff going on that's what shop adhd is about um so let's start off with this box mystery box i guess this is kind of a little feed the monster it's a small feed the monster maybe it's a monster snack all right, so we have a little box, this little eBay purchase, and there's no markings, so let's check it out. Ah, oh, guess I have to blame Tom Lipton for this, Hilger and Watts being one of his 
favorite brands. Um, anyway, I saw this on eBay for, well, I'm not even gonna tell you how much, it was very little. And uh, I just couldn't really pass it up. So it's a uh, clinometer and a 90 degrees range. And let's pull it on out here. We're gonna have a little cleaning up to do because uh, this is all covered in tape. It's all adhesive coated. Otherwise, it appears to be okay. Um, some interesting features the way this works. There's a flexure here mounted at the end that is uh, mounted between these two plates. And then there's a spring here that pulls this front down to the plate and an adjustment screw. So you can set this down on a surface, right? And uh, adjust your angle here. See, you see this. It's very finely threaded until you level this out and then there you know, you know what your uh, angle is. But uh, anyway, it's pretty interesting. Um, it's got a, uh, you can pull this down and then you can, if you pull it down, you can manually adjust it. It disengages the uh, screw so you can manually move this. I guess it's kind of like the fast action. And then this uh, here, the, the wheel is calibrated. So anyway, pretty nice. Came in this little box. And I, I will tell you, I think I paid like 35 bucks for this, right? I mean, even if it was broken, it'd be interesting, right? But it's not broken. The bubble's still there. Um, and uh, it, uh, reads nicely. I put it on my mill over here, which is both my mill tables are uh, pretty closely uh, leveled using a stair, a 15 inch stair precision level. So they're both pretty close. Um, and they're not right on the money, but I've got adjusting feet on them, and I've got it pretty close. So I put it over there, and it looks good. And if you do the if you do the twist. Uh, both ways, it comes out okay. So anyway, um, uh, pretty nice. Um, like I said, this will be a future little cleanup project here because it's got uh, it was some kind of tape put on there. Uh, it looks almost like paint. Um, so we're going to disassemble this, at least this bottom portion here and um, look at it. We may just get all sorts of adventuresome and just take the whole side off and take a look up in there. So uh, uh, look for that in the future. This appears to have been owned by AMF, American Machine and Foundry Company. Um, I don't know what particular um, a branch, but uh, it has an inspection uh, certificate here from 1970, and then the next inspection, 1971. This sticker, of course, looks much newer. Um, Anyway, there you go. Um, the box says Hilgren Watts Limited, sold and serviced in U.S. by Ingus, Ingus, E-N-G-I-S, Ingus Equipment Company, Chicago, Illinois. So there we go. That'll be a fun little to-do. Next, um, have you ever bent one of these? I've bent more than one, I've got to say, honestly. Um, and um, I've made more than one, but I bent one here not long ago. I put the tool holder in the, um, I, I put the block in, in the uh, tool holder on the rivet and I failed to cinch it tight and um, it was loose and I just forgot about it and I moved up on the work and it hit the work and boom it bent bent this thing into a nice arc I'll see if I can find it to show it to you trainer somewhere but anyway um, McMaster car sells these little setups here it's an Aloris part right Aloris uh, 
height adjustment assembly, the lowest part number is whatever tool post you have, B, XA, CXA, whatever, CA, dash HA, and it comes just as you see it here. Um, the stud, the washer, the nut, and the uh, knurled adjustment nut. And the washer is not just, you know, if you're familiar with these, not any other washer. It's got a little uh, index tab that indexes into this slot. So uh, it, that way when you crank down with the nut to uh, lock your height adjuster in place, it doesn't turn it. Anyway, so I, I bent one. And I went out on a master car, and this little setup, I believe, for the BXA was about $18. It's actually cheaper than you can buy it directly from a Loris. So uh, in these uh, weird times of pandemia, pandemic, um, pandemonium, uh, uh, McMaster car is still the most reliable industrial supplier out there. So, uh, it, you know, it, I bought an extra. Might as well keep, uh, keep one around because... You know it's going to happen so uh and for a reasonable price so why not and uh, we're going to put this one in here with a little little green loctite i've previously uh cleaned that out with a uh There we go. Get that thing back in circulation. Uh, next. Don't you hate these things? These cheap ass plastic uh, pouches that cheap ass Chinese tools come in. Um, so anyway, I've had this set of uh, uh, little punches for a while and I was looking for one the other day and I found this thing and I said you know these I really don't like these things uh, so I got my 3d printer going and I printed a little holder right to uh, to hold these I will provide a link I'm gonna up upload this uh, model to Thingiverse if you happen to have one of these punch sets from uh, Harbor Freight uh, you can download this from Thingiverse and print it, and it's um, much nicer than these stinking plastic bags. Um, but uh, so that's going in the trash. Okay, you've probably seen one of these things, the old Razor scooters. My son has one, and it was. He said the back wheel is getting kind of. It's kind of hard to turn. This is what was left of the bearing when I pulled it out. That's it. Nothing else. Bearings. There's two in there. That was all that was left. He was still riding it. So, courtesy of McMaster Car, got some new bearings. And um, we're going to throw this baby back together so that he can get back to his uh, get back to his riding he goes in the military park with my wife many days and they ride and this is not acceptable so So this is one of those overkill projects, right? So they got this little guy from a thrift store. They were at a thrift store making a donation and Thomas laid eyes on this little scooter and decided that he had to have it. So five dollars later and this thing was his 
Now, <clears throat> it's fixed. So I found some old footage. So we're gonna have some metal cutting, gratuitous horizontal mill action for no other reason than because we can. So enjoy and skip to the time shown on the screen if you wanna bypass the cutting action. So it is time to give away the Atlas wrench. I got quite a few people sent me pictures of their um, Atlas machinery or Atlas based machinery. Craftsman lays, for instance, were made by Atlas for the Sears Roebuck Company. And um, anyway, so let's go over the entrance and show you these beautiful machines. We'll start off with Art Eckstein's Craftsman Commercial. Mark Anderson of Spokane Valley, Washington sent in a shaper pick. Tim Crane. Tom O'Laughlin with a beautiful Craftsman, well restored, looks like. Stephen Lang of Shark River Machine. Steve Detloff of Hillsboro, New Mexico, who's the proud owner of his father's Atlas, the original owner. Jim Slonikowski, Eureka, Illinois, with a beautifully restored Atlas. David Steiner. Barry Stevens finishes it up with this well-restored Atlas Shaper. All right, so you've seen our entrance, our nine entrance. What I've done is I've written one through nine 
on a bunch of uh, three quarter by 10 self locking stainless steel nuts. Who knew you had those sitting around, right? So anyway, they're written in uh, these new uh, Sharpie Pros. It's not coming off. So I'm gonna dump those into this here. Okay. I've written all nine of our names down in order. Well, just random order, but they've all been assigned a number. I apologize for not having an attractive female assistant to draw the number out of this slip ring cover. That's what it is. Maybe I should contact my friend Chuck Bomarito and see if I could borrow one of his rule holders. If you've never seen Chuck's rule holders, you must go to Chuck's channel right now and go look for the rule holder video. Trust me on this. Anyway, we don't have that this evening, I'm sorry. Anyway, so, nuts in here. Toss them like an omelet. Number four, that would be Mr. Tom O'Laughlin. Mr. O'Laughlin, you are the winner of the Atlas Press Company wrench. Please send me an email with your mailing address and I will get this baby right out to you. And if you live in Canada, I'll get it out to you after the pandemic, panic, pandemonium is complete. So there we go. Another shop ADHD in the books. We'll be back soon with yet more projects. Can't really work on any of the big projects right now, like the press project, because, well, there's nobody around here to help me carry that heavy stuff, right? Uh, so... Um, that's why I'm doing a lot of you know, smaller projects right at the moment because I can do them by myself. Anyway, uh, thanks to all the guys that sent in pictures and entered. I love seeing other people's shops and hobbies, machines. It's great. It's great to see other people in the community because this is what it's all about. It's the YouTube machinist community. We're a community of like-minded people. And we need to stick together, especially in times like these. So um, in order to be a community, we have to act like it. And that's acting like it. That was great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, look for more such um, adventures uh, soon. I'm going to have a giveaway next week of um, some little uh, brazed carbide tooling. Um, I, way too small for any work that I do, right? But uh, I'm sure there are people out there with machines uh, that can use these. So uh, this is what we'll be giving away next week. And maybe something else. I never heard from Brian Block on the Monster T-Nuts, but I'm, I'm confident I will. So everybody, be safe. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what to do, what not to do in times like these. Do what you think's best, but be careful. You're all my friends. I don't want to lose any of you. So be safe in the shop. I'll be back with you soon.